Hey guys, this is Kaijin Hunter. Today I have a special video for Soul Sacrifice Delta. I want to show off two things that I haven't done already, which are major, major features of this game. One of them is online play. Um, believe it or not, there's still people who play online. There's not a whole lot. It's a smaller community, uh, but there is a Discord. Um, but online play and it also supports ad hoc is actually really fun. Um, you can't go on story quests together, but you can go on any pact any blank page, anything like that, you can do with other players. So I did team up with a fellow player over on the Discord for uh, Soul Sacrifice Delta, and we were having fun uh, just grinding out the Naked Emperor trying to get the plus 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 to unlock a certain sigil. Now I am using my English data, so I'm still trying to catch up to where I was in my Japanese one, but I thought this was a quick and fun hunt. Uh, and show you just a little bit of the mechanics of what happens when you're playing with another person. After that, I'm going to go into a deep dive and show you all the different, uh, or at least the majority, of the magical combinations that you can do in this game. It doesn't even scratch the surface of all the different spells and abilities, but it'll give you a really cool idea of where Delta really sort of uh, evolved from the original game, and just some of the crazy stuff that's possible. Like you're seeing already here, we're, we're doing fusion of spells. I was fusing uh, two um, apples together to give us both plus 200 attack, which is huge. And right now, my thing is I'm going over the speed bump, which is a natural thing on each map. I'm going to trigger the Naked Emperor, and I'm going to try to lure him into this speed because we can attack faster when we're inside the speed circle. So I'm going to put up the painting from Incubus, which is like a picture of a pretty girl. <laughs> And he has a thing where he will gather his composure, walk up to this picture, and then sort of just show off his body. And it's a really good opener. Uh, here he is stepping back at like a good gentleman. Now he's going to go and... Hey, how you doing? I mean, he's actually like... Um, he likes to expose himself. That's his story. Of course, in this game, he's just organs. He's a monster, so it's not uh, anything too lewd. Uh, but it does leave a very good opening. I'm using the Cinderella Kick spell. It's a uh, other type of spell um, which is really fun and you're doing like these Chun-Li kicks I know it's really hard to see especially with the armor um, but it's really funny and then Suzuki here um, he is trying to set up a bind uh, so you'll be able to get to see how you could do magical traps and bind a monster in the ground allowing you to get better access to their head allowing you to just pound away at them uh, so right now he's gone enraged and the naked emperor is going to give him a harder time <laughs> as he tries to cast his spell. I think we all get like electrocuted uh, every now and then, um, but it is it, it's quite fun. But we're trying very hard to keep all the battle in this circle, just because it makes it faster. Sorry, I'm getting shocked. I got so lucky I didn't die here. If I did not have the Dullahan armor on, I would have been gone. So I was very happy about that. Then he got the uh, lure in, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start kicking the face of the Naked Emperor. <laughs> I just love the teamwork that you can do, and this wasn't even over voice chat, this was over text chat and discord. Um, so you can actually coordinate things pretty well together, like, hey, let's do this, hey, let's do that. And the game's hunts are quick enough that it's very easy to iterate and get better at, you know, becoming a team. You know how, like, each sub uh, subsequent hunt, you get better and you start to get a read on what the other player is doing. So I really appreciate that the hunts aren't, you know, like, 30, 40 minute excursions. Um, it's much funner this way, I think, to just sort of come up with a strategy and just sort of own the boss. Um, but it's always, of course, very possible that you can lose. Um, it's not a, it's not an easy game, so to say. There are quests that are quite hard. Um, and if you die, you, as another player, have to go and revive the other one, which halves your health. And it's a good way to get all of you guys caught in a big attack and die and fail the quest. Um, here, I'm going to go ahead and use my black rights just for fun. I don't need to use them, but uh, and it costs Lacrima to restore them. But hey, it's a photo perfect finish. <laughs> I think it does like 2,400 uh, fire uh, damage. It's pretty crazy. Uh, but you do have to spend points in order to restore it, which kind of stinks. So here I'm using Bahamut laser lasers. I'm playing an Avalon build, which is mostly magic level. So my defense is horrible. Like I can't take much more than two hits. Um, before I die, but I get very, very high attack, which is nice. We got robbed here. We eventually got all the drops we needed, but we got robbed with a really bad one here. Uh, and then I had a little fun at the very end. 
we had spent the time to grind out the blank pages to get these uh, black horns. Almost reminds me of Nabal, uh, or not Nabal, that's Japanese, uh, Cadus. The Monster Hunter Try. <laughs> Same type of shenanigans that you get in Monster Hunter. Very fun. Anyways, I thought you guys might appreciate seeing two human players going at it um, because it's just I haven't shown it yet. Okay, now the meat of this video is I want to jump into, which is magical spell combinations. This is a new feature that they added in uh, Soul Sacrifice Delta that was not in the original one, and it is the coolest thing ever, and I love some of the stuff. I, this is meant to be a pretty comprehensive guide of showing off all the different combinations, but there may be a few that I missed, uh, so don't consider this like a tutorial or anything. This is me just showing you off the breadth of the different stuff you can do, like you can run around as if you're on fast forward mode it's quite fun so the first thing we're gonna start out with is the basic you know caveman I hit monster it dies weapons there's four types this is a thing just aptly called weapon I think a more natural way to think about it is a melee weapon uh, and these are generally used by grim users um, and it's great uh, this is the minotaur uh, axe it's the axe of her mother uh, and you has really great reach um, has really good damage output and it uh, has a really nice finisher as well. So you summon it and you just beat stuff with it. I think there's like another good one that is a siren staff uh, that the siren uses. And here I'm just in the training room messing around. It's a good place to show off stuff. Um, however, when you do hold down the button to do a long slash here, it will eat up the entire rest of your offering. Um, so the duration will then expire uh, and then you'll have to cast it again. So the next up is Stone Fist. Um, this is a non-generic one. This is from the, uh, what was it, the Abyssal Fiend uh, from the collaboration quest with uh, Tokiden. Uh, but these things are really powerful. This is sort of like the Great Sword, but you can do a nice four-hit combo. These weapons have a very special characteristic that they're a little bit heavier, so they take longer to deploy. Um, but you can interrupt boss attacks. Like if a boss is about to punch you and you hit him, it generally will interrupt them. This is a Beast Arm. Uh, these are things that are more like thrusting, and it also has a breath attack, which you hold it down, and you can spew out a line of, you know, voltage, poison, whatever it's so not. So these are really good for getting those elemental hell statuses. Like if you do enough of the opposite element, it'll petrify them or freeze them or something like that. Uh, so very fun, and you can also uh, spray that on other players. There's a few combinations that I don't show. They've got like a shield, you can spray it on the shield to make it bigger. Then we got one of my favorites, which is the spear. This is mainly used by Sanctuarium users. The reach on the spear is just ridiculous. Um, there's two major types. Uh, they all have the same basic four hit attack here, which you can cancel out of. Uh, and then just the charge attack is either a very focused um, aerial hit, or is this sort of like a jump upward and down, and it's almost like doing a homing hit. If you watch here, boom, and it just goes forward. It's really nice. So these weapons already have enough variety as it is, but you can also now do swift versions of all these by commanding them with something like the Cotton Maid's Wings. This is an evasion attack, or an evasion offering, which makes it so you can move really quick. So when you do a dash, it's like, it's like instant movement. And the cool thing is, is now when you're holding down the X button to run, um, you'll get a new swift version attack for each weapon. There's one other type of evasion, which is a burrowing type. This is much harder to use, it's more technical, but you'll burrow under the ground. Um, it's really good for actually getting up underneath a monster. Uh, I'll show off the different moves that you can do, but it's it's sort of like a shoryuken. Like, it'll like throw you into the air so you can do some aerial hits. It's very nice. Where this, this thing is just awesome. You lock onto a target and you just do a swift slash, and it's like, tring! And I think you get about a 1.87 times attack power on this one so it's almost like doing like a charge hit um, but you don't actually lose your offering so you can just do this over and over and just like swift slash a monster to death if you really want to be spammy um, or you can just use it you know sparingly and a little bit more deliberate it's totally up to you how you want to use it it's very powerful especially with the lock on covers great distance and does a huge amount of damage uh, while we have this let's check out the uh, stone fist version of this oops <laughs> You have to be holding down X. Uh, it's another reason why if you're doing these moves uh, with these four weapons, which you probably are, you do need to think about the button assignments for where you put the offerings because 
holding down X and pressing like the triangle is not the most comfortable thing in the world to do, uh, and it's very hard to do over and over again. You have to sort of like claw the, the Vita. Uh, so generally I'll put the uh, offerings for the evasive offerings on the triangle button. Uh, that way I can hold down X and either just hit square or X, a uh, circle. And finally here comes the lance. The reach on these things are just crazy. Um, so if you want a really quick way to get good at the game fast, go ahead and make sure that you put on the phoenix feathers they start you out with. And then once you get the ability to fight a harpy, you'll get an even better version of that same effect. Uh, and that's pretty much what you're going to be using. Uh, and then I think, I want to say the Elven Queen, actually, um, is the one that has another evasive one. But uh, yeah, something to look into. But those are the swift attacks. Now let's go to ground movement. These are really important for getting under an enemy and then into the air to hit them in the head and break parts. This is the Earth Drake Slash. It's a little hard to show off here, but you can actually do like a full aerial combo. You can knock monsters around, knock them back. You can hit monsters in their, you know, upper arms, their faces, the top of their backs and stuff like that. So a very good move if you need to get inside and like hit the belly of a monster or if you need to get up in the air and hit them as well. Um, of course, you can use a platform, uh, but the mole attack is very nice uh, if you can get used to it. So that's what it looks like with the normal weapon. <laughs> See how many attacks you can do? And you can actually quickly cancel into this during the um, roll. You can quick press um, the button to do your chain attack, and it will immediately knock you out of the ground. So there is a degree of freedom in how you change your direction, which is great. Okay, let's check out the next weapon. <laughs> Put that away, and we'll go over to the Stone Fist. Stone Fist is just a simple uh, sort of a Shoryuken. You jump in there and then you can do one follow-up hit. But these things are so powerful um, that if you did something like you binded a slime into the ground where their head gets lower and then you do this attack, you can hit the very top of that monster. Um, so very good for breaking parts like faces and uh, things that are high up uh, just due to the sheer power of this weapon. Here are the beast arms. So you got your normal thrust and then when you do your other attack here, it's another one where you jump in the air and you do sort of like a shoryuken. Um, I don't know if you can actually foul this up uh, with another attack. At least in the training room, I wasn't able to, and I haven't actually used this in combat, but it's nice to know that that is an option. And then with Spear, um, you can actually do quite a few hits in the air. Uh, I think it's two here, but I think you might actually be able to chain like three in a row, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, but this is, again, another just great option if you don't want to use platforms to get up really high uh, and hit some parts. Uh, it really, relatively keeps you safe as well, especially for crowd control um, with the lance or spear, whatever you want to call it. Okay, next up we're looking at armor combinations. So armor is a type of offering that you can do. They have different elements. This is the most popular one. Um, it's the Dullahan armor. Um, it's basically an all-around uh, good armor. Um, Non-elemental, just gives you some good defense, but doesn't slow you down like stone armor does. Stone armor makes you move like a slog, but it's very powerful. You got stuff like fire armor, ice armor, thunder ar volt armor. And of course, they go hand in hand together with other spells. So there is a lightning roar, which I'll show you here. Is some of the more generic ones. A lot of the ones that are monster specific that have a special motion won't work. But if you charge it all the way up, which is two charges, boom, you'll blow off your armor, do a massive amount of damage uh, to every monster that is around you. Um, it's incredibly powerful and something that I very much enjoy using. If we have the non-elemental dual hand and we use a non-elemental harpy scream, uh, nothing happens here because we just charged it once. Let's charge it twice and release and boom. We break our armor and we do massive, massive damage because we're shooting out our armor like it's shrapnel. Uh, very cool. Another cool usage of armor uh, combinations is with the blitz spells. Uh, Blitz is a type of spell that just has you sort of like shoot forward um, and you're pretty much invincible when you do this you're like Pow! and then you can just follow it up with a chain blitz over and over again I think you can get something like five hits or six hits or something like that in a row uh, of course this is just a goblin so I can only like show you one um, I'm not actually not hitting it over and over again uh, but these get more powerful if you have armor on because you are heavier 
So if you're using an armor and then you're using a blitz of the same element, uh, you'll be doing a substantially amount more damage. So if you are doing blitz, make sure you put an armor that matches your element. Finally, one of the last sort of armor combinations is with the shield. If you notice the shield, when you put it up, is really nice. It creates a huge guard. You can use it to protect your teammates. You can use it to protect yourself. And you can do this little shockwave attack, although it doesn't do that much damage. It's just good for, I guess, I don't know, hitting runs uh, and stuff like that. Uh, but this is what a normal shield looks like. But let's go ahead and put on armor of the same element and watch what happens. And then we'll go ahead and put up a volt shield. Boom! We get this massive shield now that has a thing called the epic, epic shock wave. And this thing is really powerful. Like to the point that it's like, we're not even talking like two, three times more powerful. This is much more powerful. Um, so this can be used as an actual defensive and offensive skill. Very good and easy to aim for certain body parts that you want to break off. Protecting teammates and just in general, you know, if you have like a roly-poly boss and they roll into your shield, you'll get a big down. Now, while I can't demo it here, if you have a teammate with a shield up and you go ahead and you use a uh, beast arm and you do a breath attack onto it, if it's the same element, it will charge the shield the very same way that your armor does. Uh, just a nice little added bonus when you're playing with other players who might be using shields. Okay, next major category of combination skills is with these things called mines. Uh, these things will set um, sort of like a mine up in the air. I nor normally, I know you would think about it like a ground mine, but these are more like air mines. Does that make sense? But so here I'll place an ice bomb on the ground so you can see what that looks like. It's just kind of like a bomb that if the enemy attacks it or goes over it, will blow up and deal a lot of damage to them. Uh, if you notice, they can run right through it. It's sort of attacks that trigger them. Come over here and let them attack me. Boom! Nice to know you. <laughs> Bombs can be quite fun, uh, especially when you're not playing with other players. Uh, here is the Dullahan bomb. It's got like the screaming head, decapitated. So cool. Come over here, punish me. Hit me, my friend. Boom. We don't want to be that goblin. I think went flying. Anyways, the cool thing that you can do with these bombs is you also have these mines. Mines are kind of like aerial bombs. If anything gets near it, uh, the mines will then go and attack the monster. So. Uh, let's get the goblin to come over here, and if you notice, boom, they home in and they hit him. We still have one remaining, though. So let's wait for the next one to pop up, and we will utilize it. Here's the Dullahan. Um, or is this the Iron Maiden? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, sort of spell here. This might be the Iron Maiden. Uh, but she's got a mine that you place in the air, and anything near it will just blow up. It's pretty cool. So, goblin, come on over here. <laughs> just one is good enough so they'll just stay up during their duration and they will blow up the monsters so mines very fun now we get the really cool part which is combining the two so this can be done in any order um, but if you go ahead and let's say you have a bomb on the ground so let's go ahead and place a um, let's see here, an ice bomb um, now if we do cast ice uh, mines near it it will absorb the magic and become a mortar. So now it will just start shooting off tons of magic around the area. So this is really good for hitting big bosses, for cleaning up all the small monsters around. Uh, you can do it in any order. You can have a mine up like now, then place a bomb, uh, and then it will absorb. If you notice, that does not work for the Dullahan one. Uh, generally, a lot of these combos, you have to try out, see if they work, because um, there are some... More detailed stuff that you need to know, like does this work with um, the combinations or is it special and it doesn't. But all the generic rewards that you'll get from faction results all work for sure, uh, so don't worry about that. And here's what fire looks like. If I want to go ahead and put up a fire mine up in the air and then place a fire bomb, which is this flower, it will suck them up and become a flame turret. <laughs> <laughs> raining from above okay next category is terrain magic so if you notice terrain we're gonna do a poison one here it just puts this nice poison puddle on the ground it's a puddle of magic now granted I'm not using a very high spell uh, here so it doesn't last for that long um, but if we go ahead and we place a bomb on top of it 
it will turn into a piranha plant which will then home in and shoot attack and uh, hurt other monsters we can only have one at a time uh, so if you do resummon a new one it'll be brand new uh, but ice terrain you put a bomb on it that's ice and this is what you get and so forth that's a cute little piranha plant isn't it terrain magic can also be used in conjunction with throw type spells uh, to charge them up so this is a normal throw it's like little homing missiles that you can it'll auto lock on like panzer dragoon but if you go ahead and you step on a uh, sort of the same element, um, it will supercharge them so that they're even more powerful. So if you're someone who wants to do lots of long distance, mid distance type of attacking, um, this works for both throw magic and bomb magic. So if we have the regular bomb, um, cool thing to note here is that you can actually charge non-elemental weapons like this uh, with any element. Other than that, you'll have to use a corresponding one. So this is a flame terrain will go in there with a non-element and it will gain fire very cool very versatile I imagine people who play with these types of builds focus specifically on the element that the monster they're going up against is weak to um, but it is kind of cool uh, and of course if you notice here you cannot charge a um, voltage throwing spell on a terrain spell that is not of the same element and here we are changing up our non-elemental to poison. So very cool. The final combination we have with terrain is with homing magic. Homing magic is really neat. Um, you can run around, you can charge it. It kind of reminds me of like the hammer in Monster Hunter. You can charge it up to two times and then when you release, it sends forward a forward magic attack. Sometimes there are ones that are say try and it's sort of like a trip prong one like that, which is really good for crowd control. And sometimes it's more of a singular one. It depends on the spell, so try out all the different ones and see which ones you like. If you notice, it does take a little bit of time to charge up to the level 2, its max power. But what we can do is if we have a terrain of the same element, we can stand on top of that and we can charge it almost instantly. It's like insanely fast. It's like fast charge level 7. I don't know what you would call it. Uh, but let's go ahead and try that out here. So, got a monster. We can walk around while it's charged, which is cool. Uh, but sometimes we just want to stand there and we want to exploit an opportunity. So if you see, we lay down a frost terrain and we go ahead and put a frost, uh, sp or sorry, poison terrain. And we go ahead and put the poison weapon and we're able to charge it up much faster. Did you even see how fast it charged? Check this out. Boom, two. That's done. Normal. Let's see again. One, two. Fully charged. One, two. And finally, one, two. One, two. <laughs> so it's like double the speed. The next two combinations have to do with summons. When you summon, it takes a little few seconds, uh, but you summon a golem that will stay in place and just pound what's in front of it. Uh, if you go ahead and you use homing magic of the same element, there's three different um, steps in which you can buff it. Uh, one that will improve its overall frequency of attack, one that will improve its attack power, and the other one that will improve just sort of how flexible it is to hit a monster. Reversely, you can also do a roar, and a roar will send your golem flying and make a whole bunch of little boys. Uh, these things have a mind of their own, and they act on their own, and they are funny. It is all get out, and they're cute. I mean, I love my children. See them? I'm the mother of fire golems. <laughs> So let's go ahead and do that again so you can see that. So we're going to summon the fire monster. We're going to use homing to buff him up so he can do some big damage. Okay, now we go into some of my more favorite but more sort of obscure ones, which is the healing magic ones. So we have this vine attack, and what it does is it sort of, um, what's the word that they're using? Parasite? It will grow on their body, you see these vines? If we hit the monster with a healing magic, that can be an area heal, that can be, you know, one of those ones where you just, you shoot it, um, like at the monster. It's not going to heal the monster, what it's going to do is make the plant grow. Then when it gets big, it does a huge final attack to it. And this thing is worth a ton of damage. Uh, so I'm actually very interested in running a build of this to see how strong it can get. So this is the spell from Tearwind, so we can see that the, uh, it is cursed with all these vines, and we can go ahead and increase their in size by healing 
and that will cause it to freeze the monster and then blow up and deal a ton of damage. Very nice. And now for the key feature of the game uh, when it comes to the fusion, which I think is Aboreal Fruits. These scenes are amazing. Um, so at smaller levels, they generate two fruit. At the gold or black, they generate three. Uh, you can pick off the fruit or other teammates can, and they can then hold down the square button to down them, or press square to throw the effect at the players in front of them. You can do healing spells in order to restore the fruit without having to cast and fuse them all over again. This first one that we're looking at is a healing fruit. It will just heal you for a bunch of HP. Uh, and you can go ahead and you can fuse it by throwing it at the tree. And by doing that, you'll get these super uh, life fruits, which will heal you by a ton. Next up is the Vim Blossom. This is an attack based fruit, so that's why it's red. When you down it, it gives you plus 50 attack for 60 seconds from everything up until gold, uh, through gold, and then 120 seconds for black. And if you go ahead and you combine a Vim Blossom with a Vim Blossom, you get Demon Fruits, which instead of 50 attack, you get a massive 200 attack boost. So that is a huge amount. The only difference between this and Behemoth ones, which I'll show you, uh, is that the Behemoth eggs will, or um, the Behemoth fruit will also heal you when you down it. This one is just a plain up attack game that lasts for a very long time. For wall blossoms, uh, these are ones that increase your uh, anti-element uh, defenses. Um, and then these last for a minute or two minutes if you're using a black version of the spell. If you combine them, they make the uh, ether fruit, which is just very high increase in elemental defense up. So use that if you're having trouble. Then we have the fourth and final, which is the levy fruit. Uh, this is a speed based one. So when we down it, it makes us run and move faster. This only applies to movement, it doesn't actually apply to attacks or anything. And if we combine the two, we can get the Gale Fruit, which will allow you to move so fast, it is practically comical. Look at that. <laughs> Makes you run around like you're a chipmunk. So the final one is a very special fruit called the Starvelings Fruit. This is from a behemoth. Uh, this one acts sort of like a Vim Blossom. It's for buffing your attack, and that's why it's red. So when you down it, it gives you plus 50 attack. And then when you fuse them together, you get a thing called the Fiend Fruit. And what that does is give you not only a uh, healing fruit effect, so it heals you um, by a lot, but it also gives you plus 200 attack, which is the same effect as the Demon Fruit. So this thing is OP. So now let's go into mixing the other types. This can get confusing fast, but I just want to give you an idea of what the game has. Start with the healing one as our base, and then we'll go ahead and put on uh, the uh, Vim Blossom, which is the attack increaser, and we fuse those together and we get a very special thing called the Anima Fruit. What this will do will randomly heal one of your broken offerings. So if you're doing like a summon over and over again and you break it, it'll bring it back to one step right before it broke, which will allow you to then obviously restore your offerings. So very cool if you're doing a lot of uh, offering spamming. Next one is fusing the healing fruit with the defense fruit, the wall blossom. And what that will do will give you the phoenix fruit. Phoenix fruit will allow you to temporarily restore yourself from death. Uh, so if you take it and you throw it at a teammate who has died, they're like a spirit. Um, or if you grab it as a spirit, I believe you can. It will allow you to come back to life for a limited period of time. Something like, I think, a minute for everything. And then when it's uh, black, it's for two minutes. Of course, if you clear the quest in that time, then you'll be fine. You'll be able to participate and get, you know, the soul essence and stuff like that. The next one is a healing fruit with the Levy Bloom fruit, which was the speed one. This extends your magical um, durations. I'm not exactly sure what all this works with. Uh, and of course, if you do fuse a fruit, you, it's it's settled. Like you can't fuse that with another type. It's locked in. And finally, I'll show you why the Behemoth fruit, the Starveling fruit was considered special. Um, you're not really meant to mix this with any other fruits uh, except itself, which is why it is both a healing and an attack booster because it's powerful. So if we take something like a healing or any other fruit and we mix it with the Starveling, we get a nasty one called the Chthonian fruit. And what that does is make it like you died. You don't even get the benefits of being dead. You can't like hit enemies, you can't grab offerings, you are literally in limbo for as long as it takes in order to get out of it, um, which is not something you want to be doing. 
So those are all the combinations with the healing fruit. Now let's take the more offensive one, which is the Vim Blossom, and to add it into the defensive one, which is the Wall Blossom. And what we get is a new thing called the Bastion Fruit. It creates this little barrier around us, if you watch when I put this on and I eat it. And this barrier will protect us from the next one hit, no matter what it is. And this lasts as long as until you get hit. So let's go ahead and turn on attacking. Boom, you see? <laughs> we were fine. Uh, so this is a fun fruit to have and to share with other players. Then let's keep on moving up and we're going to go to the Vim Blossom, which is again the attack booster. And we're going to mix it with the speed booster, which is Leva Bloom. And what we will we get? Ching! We get the Aegis Fruit, which makes us immortal for a small period of time. It's actually 10 seconds for bronze, silver, gold and 15 seconds if you're using black. It does not protect you from getting hit, it just protects you from dying. Uh, so a very big distinction there, uh, and very important. But that can be coming in handy very often. Then the final combination that we haven't covered here, there's two of them. Uh, one is the Wall Blossom Fruit with the Levy Bloom. So this is the, what is it, the, the defense one and the speed one put together. Ching! They all look the same, don't they? Uh, this does a thing called Wording Fruit, or Warding Fruit. Warding Fruit will make it so that you are immune to status ailments for 60 seconds. And if it's a black version, then it's uh, 2 minutes, 120 seconds. Okay, we're not quite done yet with these fruits. Um, we do have, I want to show you the terrain. There's only one type of terrain spell. Um, not terrain, uh, this is the platform. Um, and you can literally just summon up a platform. And this is really crucial to learn how to use because it will allow you to get up high so that you can break off different parts, which is very important in this game. You can charge this thing, and that will release it and make a very large platform, so multiple players can get on top of it and do stuff. Um, the platform also works sort of like a shield, like you can block attacks and stuff like that. But one of the areas where the platform comes also in handy is with trees. So if you don't fuse anything together, and you just use a base tree, let's say a heal tree here, put the healing fruit down, and then we'll do a platform underneath it it will get absorbed by the platform and give the platform special attributes. For the healing fruit, anytime we're on top of the scene, we are just constantly healing life. If you notice, I'm using blood, which takes away my life, and it's instantly healing back. So this is a very powerful combination. If you just want to get in place and whack away at an enemy, it will keep restoring your health as long as you are on it. And the cool thing is, is this works the same as sort of like um, group healing magic. Uh, so if you have trees up on here, they will also restore their fruits as well. Um, so stuff like, you know, negating your hit um, or fixing up uh, a broken offering. These are things that you can keep up indefinitely while you're on this platform. All you got to do is make sure that you're using the healing fruit in the platform and you'll just have this nice big healing spot uh, which will restore all the fruits in the tree. I also love that when it restores fruits fruit in a fusion, uh, like a fused tree, it produces fruits that are already pre-fused. Um, so you can just keep, you know, keep having them. And the platform lasts for a very long time. So that was the healing fruit, which gives us this gradually healing platform. If we go ahead and we do a platform underneath a Vim Blossom fruit, um, anybody who stands in here will get plus 50 attack um, as long as they're standing in here. The moment they leave, they do not get the bonus. Uh, but if you re-enter, you get plus 50 attacks. So this is a great way to buff everybody um, when they're all up on the platform attacking. Now we'll do a wall blossom, which is the defensive one, and then we'll do a platform underneath it. And that will create a platform that gives everybody inside uh, anti-elemental. So this increases your elemental defense. Now, unfortunately, you are not able to do a platform on a fused together um, fruit. So it has to be base ones. And the levy from one, I don't think it's very useful but it does give you increased movement speed. It doesn't really change your attack speed or anything, so I don't know, I guess it could be useful for getting out of the way in case you have a monster that likes to shoot you with missiles. Uh, but other than that, uh, I think generally the healing fruit is going to be your best choice. Or even better than that, actually, is going to be the Starveling's fruit. So let's go on and put on the Starveling's fruit. If you remember, that's the one that gives us both a heal and attack up. And you guessed it, if we put it down and then we do a platform above it, it makes it both a healing fruit platform, so we get the gradual heal, and we also get the attack boost from like the Vim Blossom type stuff. 
So that's plus 50 attack and gradually healing for both you, players, and trees on the platform just in one shot. So yeah, pretty OP. And of course, speaking about healing spells, it's important to keep in mind that there is another type called the um, Parasite. What that does is you basically use it to throw on and attach these vines to a monster. And then when you do healing magic around it, don't worry, it doesn't heal the actual boss. Um, what it does is it causes the plant on it to grow. Uh, and when it grows to full shape, which is two tiers up, so you can use almost like this uh, healing attack that you, you could shoot out towards allies, um, it will then explode. And it does a huge amount of attack damage. I think that base one is like a thousand uh, damage uh, attack, and this one from Tierwin is something like 1200. So we're talking some pretty darn big damage, especially if you're going around healing everybody. Uh, you can see where like uh, you could do both a support and offensive build doing these things. I think it's pretty cool. Another cool place where Roar plays a role is with summons. Uh, so with summons you can bring these golems that just sort of pop up and they just sort of stand stationary and they punch everything that's in front of it, whether it be a player, whether it be a monster, and they have like actual hitboxes so you can trap monsters in corners uh, with golems and fiends. Uh, and they will just pummel on them. The thing is, if you hit them with a homing missile or a homing magic of the same type uh, several times, it will improve both uh, their attack, their attack frequency, and then their sort of movement speed for like when they're twisting left and right trying to hit the enemies around it. So here is the normal uh, summon. It is heat, so we are going to use a heat homing magic here. If you notice, we are going to charge it up, and then we're going to hit it again. Tring! And now he's buff. <laughs> now he will attack much more frequently, much more stronger, um, and he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. But the coolest and cutest thing in this game is if you roar near a summon, it'll break them into mini golems. <laughs> Aren't these guys? Like, these are my sons. Don't mess with them. Uh, my sons have a mind of their own. They'll run around and do whatever the heck they want. They'll last for the duration of the uh, summon. And they will just punch and destroy enemies that are in front of you. So yeah, being able to... The roar is great. You can use it to interrupt. You can blow off, you know, armor of the same element. Uh, you can also do it to blow up summons. So you get mini golems. And there's another use, but I am going to have to go into a hunt in order to show you. Which is there's a way to pass on buffs that you got from those fruits. Onto other players using the roar technique. Um, it will literally just pass over the effects from you to them uh, and it's got a huge radius so it's very useful okay this is going to be kind of putting it all together in a small example here and this is an early hunt so it's gonna be very fast and easy we're gonna go ahead and start here by putting on a vim blossom fruit fuse it with itself so i can make demon fruit which raises your attack by 50 points which is healthy i'm going to hold it down to consume it and now if i use the roar ability i will be able to push it off myself and anybody else in that radius is going to get that so, ching, I just transferred it over to them. So now they're buffed. Um, so it's very cool if you want to play like a support build. And there's one left for me as well. So we can all enjoy high attack. <laughs> now you could just throw the apple on them. But sometimes the NPCs are not always right next to you. Uh, and the charged up roar has quite a difference. Uh, the distance that it can travel. So you can go ahead and push over stuff like this very easily. If you notice right now, I'm pushing out the uh, healing that's in my character because I went ahead and downed a seed. So this works with stuff like Regenesis seeds. It works with plant effects. Um, anytime you have a buff, you can use the roar to push it off to other players. But you can also use it to push it off to the monsters in a way. So watch this. I'm going to go ahead and use Terrawind's um, Parasite thing here. And because I have a healing on my character, so watch me pop a seed here for healing, I'm then going to roar, and that's going to push it out onto the boss. Um, and it's going to cause those flowers to bloom really fast. So I see lots of potential in an Aboreal type of healing build. And I'm going to try that out. And if I get it to work, I will definitely show you a full bona fide hunt. So there is another combination that I wasn't able to show, which is if someone is doing a transform spell, for example, they transform into a gargoyle and they're a rolling ball, and you go up to them with an arm, uh, like the uh, stone fist arm and you punch them with a charged up punch it will send them flying forward doing a ton of damage uh, so there's stuff like that um, which is really fun 
uh, that you can do. Uh, and I'm sure I probably missed something else that's really obscure. But this is such a great feature that they added um, from the original Soul Sacrifice into Soul Sacrifice Delta. Um, apparently the original game didn't have any of this. So all these experimentations, all these fun combos and things that you can do. And I'm telling you right now that the combinations are really powerful. Um, they do a massive amount of damage. Um, so they're very important to the gameplay and I think very fun to use as well. But hopefully this video gives you an idea of just a little bit of the depth that you can get. And again, this doesn't cover all the different types of spells. There's still like stasis to stop time. You can use like lures to trap in monsters. You can do stuff like uh, barriers where if a monster enters this barrier, they will freeze. There's all sorts of different spells out there um, that don't have combinations that I haven't shown you guys yet. So I will find a way to do that, but in a fun way in the videos, probably as I hunt other monsters. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your favorite combinations in the comments down below. And until next time, happy soul sacrificing.